I'm Professor Krusty Trenches, a bloke who knows things, and today we are going to be looking at two sites in Roman London. Now, these are some particularly interesting sites, but once again they do show that complete lack of care that the Roman builders seem to have possessed when building projects in Britannia. Now, we shall be looking at two types of Roman structure. Uh, the first one that we are going to look at is a defensive structure, which really should have been built for a very high standard. But as we shall see, Roman shoddy building practices crept into the building scheme. So we are going along now to the Vine Street City Wall site. And this is situated near Aldgate. And this is where we find this. Yet another example of shoddy, bad building practices by the Romans. So, as you can see, it's held up by bricks. Now, that can't be very good at all. This was supposed to defend Londinium from attack. But as you can see, while they did a very good job of the stonework on the top here, leaving this huge gap supported by bricks and hydraulic presses at the bottom, was not a very good idea. Certainly it is not satisfactory should the wall come under attack from barbarian hordes. So I thought I would ask my colleague, Professor Rimshard Wheat, exactly what he thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, beer. <laughs> <laughs> and so, unfortunately, Professor Rimshard Wheat, having already had a skin full of beer before we arrived at the site, was completely unable to give me any educated guesses as to why the Romans did this. We can also see um, why they left behind a huge range of materials as well. Uh, particularly the drinking flagons which caught Professor Wheat's eye here. Uh, so they were obviously drunk when they were building this section of wall as well. Which might account for the fact that they gave one glaring last error in the construction. They didn't finish this turret. All they did was lay down a solid foundation base and then they just left it. It's not even keyed into the wall. What exactly were they doing? Well, we think that at least one of the builders was suffering from some marital problems. A dedication stone was found on the site, which seems to record a bit of conflict between a husband and a wife. This dedication stone has a scripture on it, which has been recently decoded. It reads as follows. Marcus had been out on the booze all night and had also been to an orgy at a friend's site. His wife, the Lady Titimus, gave him a bollocking when he arrived back home at the villa in the early hours. This vital clue gives us some evidence as to why the Romans here in Londinium 
didn't finish their projects as were planned. They were completely rat most of the time, a bit like Professor Rimshard Wheat, who was completely unable to give any further advice on this matter. So now we are going to go to our second site. A little bit further across Londinium, we find the remains of the Temple of Mithras, also known as the Mytherium. This site has been known about for quite some time, but as with most things, it has been forgotten. It wasn't until recently that the whole site became available again when a new building project allowed them to excavate the original position of the temple. The head of Mithras, as can be seen here, gave away the reason for the dedication to the temple, so we know quite a bit about it. We also know that this is a cult which has been seen in other parts of the Roman Empire. And as you can see here, this example was again an unfinished temple in the north of England. Many finds were found in the excavation of the temple site again, and I am particularly impressed with some of the pots, sherds and roof tiles. My other find, of course, was the Roman toilets, which I was very grateful for and made use of. Now, the temple site itself um, has been moved a few times. This has been recently rediscovered into its uh, original position, and we now can see this as it was intended. When the lights come back on, though, we can start to see some of these usual shoddy Roman building practices creeping back in again. The site of slightly unfinished walls, column bases with no columns on them, the lack of flooring, no mosaics, no flue tiles for any heating systems, and no windows or roof either, let alone a complete absence of any furniture inside the building. What exactly were the Romans thinking? Now the normal practice inside the temple seemed to be one of feasting, orgies and other things that just are not acceptable in today's society. And also, there was a home here for Vestal Virgins. Now, the average Romano-British man was hoping that if he came to the temple, he might get lucky with one of these type of ladies. But unfortunately, he was in for a shock, because he's more likely to have taken one of these out. And this, of course, was not what he was expecting. Now, the temple site, as I said, shows some very, very bad building practices, but this is probably the worst. This is a very bad trip hazard. As you can see from the jagged edge there, this was designed for someone to have a very nasty accident. And this piece of wall here was supposed to be supported by the buttress that you see on the right. But my investigations had revealed that this wall was not actually bonded in and there is a huge crack developed, which means that the buttress doesn't work at all. And then finally, looking around the building, I found three further faults. These were the unfinished walls at the end here. No proper flooring at all in the entire building and no seating or other furniture apart from a few wooden planks, which seem to serve no function whatsoever. So that concludes our visit to Roman London, or Londinium as they would have known it. It is now a bustling city as you can see here, but back in its day it was one of the proudest Roman towns in the frontier and it was the hub of Roman activity in Britain. So now, today, when you visit modern-day London, in the city, you walk in the footsteps of the Romans themselves. My name has been Professor Krusty Trenches and my colleague Professor Rimshard Wheat, and I say farewell until we meet again.